Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Registers of 8085 Microprocessor Status or Flags Register. Today we are in the part 2. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. If you remember in the previous session we were introduced to the components of the Flags Register. Today we are going to cover all of the components starting with the carry and the auxiliary carry flags. Thereafter we will learn about the sign flag. Then we will study about the parity flag. And finally we will end our session by learning about the zero flag. So let's begin with the carry and auxiliary carry flags. Now before we proceed ahead, I hope you remember, in the programmer's view of 8085, which we are eventually completing, we added the flag register and it is also of 8 bits. However, among all the 8 bits, we can only use 5 of them. And another important information that one should remember regarding the flags register, that the bits of this particular register is affected based on the value stored inside the accumulator register. Let's now begin with the carry and the auxiliary carry flags. At first we are going to learn about the carry flag. Notice, this is the least significant bit of the flags register. And this is what we call the carry. In short, it is represented as CY. Now in the previous session, we also have seen this. The carry flag is affected when we perform some kind of addition. In order to simulate that, let's perform another addition today. It's a hexadecimal addition. So 3 plus 1 will give us the result as 4. Do remember, this is a hexadecimal value. Now coming to the most significant digits, if you notice, with F we are adding 4. So in the result, we are going to have 1 less than the addend, that is 3. And it will also be accompanied by 1, that is the carry. Now notice, our accumulator is of 8 bits, so when we will store the result, 3, 4 will get stored inside the accumulator. However, in this particular addition, the carry has been generated, so the information regarding that will be stored inside the flags register. And how it is going to be stored? Well, within the flags register, the least significant bit is going to be set or we can say the flag will be raised. Let's now focus on the bit position number 4 which is AC or auxiliary carry. In order to understand about this flag, let me show you another addition. Notice, in the least significant digits, we are adding 5 with E. Now E is 1 less than F. So if we take 1 from 5, it will become 4 and this will become F. Now with F, since we are adding 4, the result is going to be same. So as the sum, we will get the value 3 and there will be a carry, right? Let's now perform the addition between these three. Well, 1 plus 8 is 9 and 9 plus 1 is A in hexadecimal, right? Because that's 10 in decimal. So we will have the result as A. Now notice, here, although we haven't got the carry from the entire addition, however, we have gotten carry from the addition of the least significant digits. Such a carry is known as the intermediate carry, half carry, or auxiliary carry. Now Intel calls it AC, which is the acronym for auxiliary carry. So in this particular addition, since we have got the half carry, the auxiliary carry, that is, within the bit position number 4, the flag is going to be raised. So what we have learned so far? When the carry is generated from the addition of the most significant hexadecimal digits, the bit position number 0, which is reserved for carry within the flags register, is going to be set. On the other hand, when the carry is generated from the addition of the least significant hexadecimal numbers, the bit position number 4, which is reserved for the auxiliary or the half carry, is going to be set. So in short, carry is set, that is, the CY flag will be set to 1, if the carry is generated from the most significant hexadecimal digits. And on the other hand, the AC flag or the auxiliary carry flag is going to be set, that is AC is going to be set to 1, if the carry is generated from the least significant hexadecimal digits. For your information, in addition of two 8-bit numbers, the carry can either be 1 or 0. Therefore, to store the carry information, 
one bit storage space is enough. Instructions that use the carry flag is widely used in the user programs. On the other hand, since auxiliary carry is actually the intermediate carry, we the users aren't interested in storing this information. But 8085 still stores this information in the bit position 4 of the flags register. The result of the execution of DAA instruction, which actually means decimal adjust accumulator, basically it is used during BCD addition and at that time the AC flag is practically used. So that was all about the carry and the auxiliary carry flags. Let's now learn about the sign flag. Now if you notice, in the flags register, the bit position number 7, which is annoted by S, is actually reserved for the sign flag. Now at the beginning of this chapter, we learned about the word length of the microprocessor, right? There, we also have seen the sign representation of 4-bit binary numbers. If you remember, in case of 4-bit binary numbers, the place value of the most significant bit is a negative value. And due to this reason, whenever we have one in this particular place, we get the negative numbers. Now think about it. We already know the flag's register status is going to be affected by the contents of the accumulator. Now accumulator is actually an 8-bit register. So in case of accumulator, what is going to be the place values? Well, it will begin from 2 raised to the power 0 and till 2 raised to the power 6, it will be the same. However, for the most significant bits place, the place value is going to be minus 2 raised to the power 7, isn't it? Now, let me show you how the sign flag is going to be affected. For this, we are going to take the example of the previously done calculations. Consider this addition. Well, we already know in order to store the carry, the carry flag is going to be used. So for this instance, we can directly discard it because within the accumulator, this value is going to be stored, right? Now, although we have performed this in hexadecimal, within the accumulator, the binary value will be stored. So four will be stored as 0, 1, 0, 0. Now what about three? It is going to be stored as 0, 0, 1, 1. Now notice the sign bit, it is 0. Therefore, for this particular addition, after the value stored within the accumulator register, the sign flag will not be raised, that is, it is going to be reset to 0. On the other hand, if we consider the second addition, notice we got the result here as A3. This result is also going to be stored within the accumulator register as binary. So 3 is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1. Now what about A? It is 10 in decimal, right? So the binary value of A is going to be 1, 0, 1, 0. Notice the most significant bit now? It is 1. So for this particular addition, the sign flag is going to be raised. Now you might argue that this is an addition of unsigned values. And this is a positive result then why the sign flag is being set? Well, it is being set due to the structure of it. However, do note this, in case of operations involving unsigned numbers, the sign flag, that is the S flag, is going to be ignored. So what we have learned so far? If the most significant bit of the accumulator is 1, the sign flag is going to be set, that is, S will become 1. Instructions that use the S flag are quite often used in the user programs. So that was all about the sign flag. Let's now learn about the parity flag. Now coming back to our flags register, if you notice, the bit position number 2 is assigned for P, that is parity. Now the job of the parity flag is to find out whether the number of ones in the result of an operation stored within the accumulator register is even or odd. Let me illustrate that using an example. Say after an operation within the accumulator register, we have got the value A3. Now you already know, although we are writing it as hexadecimal, however, within the accumulator register, it is going to be stored as binary. So 3 is going to be 0011. Now what about A? Well, it will be 1010. 
Let's now count the number of ones within this value. It is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's an even number. So when the number of ones within the accumulator register is an even number, the parity flag is going to be set. Let's now consider another value. Say within the accumulator, now we have got EA. A is going to be 1010. 0, 0. Now what about E? This is 14 in decimal. And that in binary is going to be 1110. 1, 1, Correct? Let's now count the number of ones within the value. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now this is odd. So due to this result, the parity bit is going to be reset to 0 or we can say the flag is not going to be raised. So what we have learned so far? The parity flag is going to be raised or it is set or in other words, P will become 1 if the number of 1s in the accumulator is even. Now do remember, as the user doesn't really care for the number of 1s present in the result after an arithmetic operation, practically, this flag is not of much use. So that's all about the parity flag. Let's now learn about the zero flag. Now within the flags register, the bit position number 6 is annotated as Z. This is occupied for the zero flag. Now when it will be set or reset? Well, for that, we will have to depend on the value inside the accumulator. Within the accumulator, if we have got all zeros, or in hexadecimal we can say 0, 0, which in binary, as the result is going to be stored within the accumulator as all zeros, in that case only, the zero flag or the Z flag is going to be raised. So basically, the zero flag is set or Z becomes 1 if the accumulator contains all zeros. So that's all the important flags within the flags register. Regarding the bit positions 1, 3 and 5, we already know these are don't care combinations. Now let me provide you some more information. We already know that the bits within the flags register are affected due to the contents present inside the accumulator register. Or in other words, we can say after an operation, when the result is stored inside the accumulator register, the bits within the flags registers are affected. Now you must be wondering within the programmer's view of 8085, why exactly did we place the flags register beside the accumulator? Is there any reason behind it? Because if you notice the general purpose registers, the placements of these, they have a significance. And what is that? We can either treat them as single 8-bit data storages or we can also store 16 bits of data or address in these if we treat them as a register pair. Similarly, the accumulator and the flags register's placement does have a meaning. The contents of this particular register pair cumulatively prompts the status of the processor and that's why these two all together are known as PSW or processor status word. Now let me explain why it is termed like this. If you think about it, after any operation, the processor generally stores the outcome within the accumulator register. And based on the content of the accumulator register, the flag register is affected. And based on the status of all these bits, it is possible that the next decision will be taken. So at that specific time, the status of the accumulator and the flags register in reality is the status of the processor. Therefore, the name processor status word is quite befitting. And due to this reason, the flags register is also known as status register. So that's all about the status or the flags register. I do believe that all the different components of the status register is now clear to you. So in this session, we cover the topics, carry and auxiliary carry flags. Then we learned about the sign flag, parity flag, and finally we learned about the zero flag. All right, people, that will be all for this session. 
In the next session, we are going to learn about the remaining portion of the programmer's view of 8085. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.